So um, um, my lab uh, is here in the museum and also in biology, uh, where, where we sort of do a lot of things. And I'll just do a, a brief, um, <laughs> brief, <laughs> brief uh, uh, summary on some of the stuff we're doing right now. So we do macroevolution, so that's large-scale evolution beyond the species or population level. And we do this by, by um, getting raw data. So this is field work in the high Arctic. And we do field work in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Colombia with an O, uh, and Niger, uh, West Africa. And all this to collect more fossils, plants, animals. And some of them turn out to be um, cool, cool uh, crocodiles and dinosaurs and birds and, and other things. And, and here's a crocodile we named uh, last year uh, called Caprasuchus. But, but the whole list of things is just producing more and more paleo uh, biodiversity. Um, with this biodiversity, we're also looking at it in, in sort of deeper, uh, using, using uh, more technology. So, so here's uh, both uh, medical CT scanning and micro CT scanning of, of fossils and extant or, or, or living animals to start doing some comparative anatomy on the inside. And everything in colored here uh, is an airspace um, inside the head. So on the bottom is a bird, on the top is a, a bird-like dinosaur. And, and we're now able to start look at very complex anatomies on the inside. And so this is, a, this is proving to be a a wealth of information that, that paleontologists just haven't had ever. Um, but this is what we do. We, 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 we try and co uh, connect um, what's going on at the genetic level to what's going on at gene expressions and cell, cell things like death, proliferation, migration, and so forth, and, and, and developmental anatomy to finally evolutionary anatomy and then back to each other because this should be all, all one circle somehow. And, and we're, most of the lab is actually involved with, with doing this kind of work. And all these images are, are, are direct images from, from our research. Um, we can look at, we can look at, at uh, sort of the extant living animals around us and look at, at the genetics. But the problem is that if we're looking at, let's say, the, the dinosaur to bird transition, we don't have genetics involved in place there. We have a ton of fossils. Um, uh, to look at, and all these fossils have, have really spectacular anatomies along with them. Here, here's, a, here's a fossil from China, Joholornis. It's, it's the very first bird after Archaeopteryx, and it's just one, one wing, of course. But our, our efforts to try and look at what developmentally may have been going on with these large-scale evolutionary transitions involves, um, and this is all, all again from the lab, looking at things like, like how cells live and die and migrate and condense and how vascular patterning, like so angiogenesis or, or blood, may actually be shaping tissue, tissue level, level patterning. You're right. And so we can do this by looking at, at embryos. We look at embryos. Here's an optical projection tomography that we look at. We can start doing um, a sort of digital overlays with these things. We've started to invent a, 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 or reinvent the wheel and look at how we can start now quantify uh, developmental space of tissues. Here, here's just one wing bud developing, and we, we can go through the whole, the whole process of development and then quantify statistically where cells are, are putting and or laying or, or giving anatomy and taking away anatomy and bring growth factors to this. So all this is, is, uh, hasn't, even be, hasn't been published yet, but it's, all, it's, it's the direction we're going to. And the idea is to, I'll wrap up, the idea is to see if we can really test evolution in a developmental sense. And so there has been some idea as to going from, if we can go evolution one way, why not go backwards too? And so this is what we're testing. We've just started, this is two more slides, we've just started a whole new, new project uh, with, with a postdoc looking at, uh, um, so the fin to limb transition, which happened about 400 million years ago, or 375, uh, water to land, there's one fish alive today that can actually walk underwater. And a, a lot of fishes can do this, but this one's is particularly interesting because no one's really described it before, and it's very close to the, to the origin of amphibians. And here's, the, here's a micro CT scan that we have of this guy. And we've trained these guys to walk on land. And this is actually a fish walking on land. Uh, it's lived its entire life on land under IgA uh, vegetable misters. And, and it's doing quite well. And we're now looking at the biomechanics, the muscular actions, and the, and the detailed microanatomy of what's going on with the fins of these guys after they've lived on land their entire lives. Um, and that's essentially looking at what environmental effects or epigenetic effects are responsible for, for anatomical change. In the last second, <laughs> negative second, um, I just want to put a plug in for something that was just uh, accepted and so, or nearly fully accepted, and that is that we're going to start three new courses this spring, uh, May, June, six weeks in the high Arctic uh, under other atmospheric and oceanic sciences, uh, earth and planetary sciences, and geography. So, thank you.